Welcome to this scary Blender Halloween tutorial. Please subscribe to get my next tutorial. In this exciting tutorial we'll cover the boolean tools and the subdivide tools. We will make a jack of lantern. The same method covered in this tutorial was also used to make both the witch and the ghost pumpkin carvings. Please subscribe. Let's begin. Right, first of all we'll delete the actual default cube. Uh, like I say, we're going to be making the pumpkin in this tutorial, so let's get something that's close to the shape of a pumpkin. So we'll add in a the mesh and we're going to add in a UV sphere. Right, the default UV sphere, if we go down in this box down here, is 32 by 32. We don't need that, so we're going to change that to 12 by 12. to make our UV sphere. Hit the tab key, go into edit mode, and we're gonna do is select edge select, and we're gonna select all the alternate edges. So, select all the alternate edges, and this is gonna make the actual shape of the pumpkin. So, with them all selected, hit the S key and scale them in slightly. Then what we're gonna do is control B to it get the bevel tool, press enter to fix it and we're going to change this to we'll change that to, to 0 0.2 and we'll change it to 2 which will make it quite a sharp edge when we subdivide it and the next thing we're going to do is make this roughly this shape of the pumpkin so A to select all, scale this down in the Z direction and already we've gained something that looks a bit like a pumpkin but not exactly so normally they will go on proportional edit select these edges that, that edge there and that edge there and G and Z to move it up slightly because a pumpkin I don't know whether you've noticed looks a bit like a smiley face from the side so and then we'll get on the edge on the actual base here I've just switched around to the base don't need this so I'm going to go on point select select that point in the center control plus select small points and then X to delete the face and then I'm going to select those points again. Oops, sorry. Go on edge select. Select those points again. Just those points. I'm doing this where I'm doing shift, alt, and left select. To select all. And alt. Uh, alt and left select will do All right, so you just alt left select and then what I'm going to do is just actually scale in the Z direction by zero which will flatten out the base of it as you can see it has then knock off the proportional editing hit the top select that and I'm going to flatten that as well by scale Z zero and that sort of flattens the actual top of this. I'm going to do the same on the top. I'm going to delete those edges there. So X. This time delete vertices. And all that does is leave a hole. Go on edge select. Select the edges. Scale them up. And then we're going to G and Z to move them down slightly. E to to extrude, S to scale, scale it in slightly, and then G and Z, just to move them down slightly, and scale it in. And this hole is where the actual uh, the pumpkin goes into. Or the stem of the pumpkin. I'm just going to actually hit smooth shade. And as you can see, we're getting something that looks a bit like a pumpkin. All we need to do now is make the stalk. 
So I'll select that area there, Shift and D to duplicate that edge, press Enter to fix it, and then press P, and then select by loose parts. This will enable you to actually select this edge here, and that was go is going to be the actual stem of the pumpkin. So if you hit F2, this allows you to name things, so S T E M and we'll click on the pumpkin and we'll call that the F2 key pumpkin. Right. So I've selected the stem as you can see up here, it shows you in there. You can also rename them up here by double clicking. But I just think the F2 key is a lot quicker and it like I say it puts the object name right in front of you so you can change it easily. So the next thing we're going to do is the stem. So select the stem, go into edit mode by pressing the tab key, select all the edges, then E and Z to move it up slightly, scale it in with the S key, E and Z, scale it in with the S key, then E and Z, scale it in with the S key. It depends how you want to actually do your stem. I mean, some people, it's sometimes nice to put a bit of a twist on this stem. So, select the edge, rotate in the Z direction. Uh, put proportional editing back on, to, and then rotate Z. And use the left mouse button to actually shrink the actual distortion and just twist it, just gives you a, a bit of a more realistic image and then G and Y just to move it in the Y direction as you can see now I've got a, a stem that looks pretty realistic F to fill and that says pumpkin more or less done all we're going to do is subdivide the actual pumpkin by one so hit the little spanner, add a modifier Subdivide the surface by one and apply. You can't do this while you're actually in edit mode, so press the tab key to come out of edit mode and apply. Depending how you want to define the uh, pumpkin, if you move these edges closer together or far apart, you get more d defined lines. It's entirely up to you. There isn't very much distortion in this pumpkin at the minute, so what I'm just going to do is add a bit of distortion. And the way I'm going to do this is by going to edit mode, select point select, and then select. And what I'm going to do is select random. Uh, put proportional editing on, and then scale it. And then for some reason the uh, scale scale it slightly just to put a bit of distortion in the pumpkin I think I put a bit too much then so I'm just going to undo that so A to unselect everything select random what I'm going to do is not the random down a bit because I think it's just a bit too pronounced that so as you've got just a few points are selected now so now scale just slightly and G and Z just move it down slightly and as you can see now we've got a pretty rough looking pumpkin scale it up in the Z direction Z and G and Z just to move it down slightly and if I add the madcap just to show you what this is looking like in a pumpkin so hit the second one up here on this select madcap and I believe there's an orange that's quite close to pumpkin coloured And that gives you the rough idea of the pumpkin.
Right, so hide the pumpkin, hide the stem. The next thing we're going to do is work on the face. As I said, what we're going to do is actually put the image in um, this image I, I I did myself on a piece of paper and then I photographed it. But, but I did it at very low resolution, but I'm going to add the mesh in and it's going to be an image reference. I think I'll use uh, let's have a look. I think I used this one for my image. What I'm going to do is move that slightly in the down direction and then I'm going to add in this shape here first. So hit the seven keys to look from the top, add in a mesh and the mesh I'm going to use is the circle because it's very similar to it and I'm just going to knock the opacity down of this image so what you do is you go into the image texture there go into alpha uh, sorry hit the alpha and change this down to 50% or just to, uh, I've got that at 0.25 of a percent all that's done is it's made everything fade, fade down so I can see my actual circle. So move the circle roughly in this right place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing the tab key. And I'm going to go on to proportional editing here and then start moving these down. So G. And basically what I'm going to do is make that shape. Because I've got put proportional editing done, what it does, it moves more than one at once. So I'll just keep moving around this until I get things just the where I want them. And if you actually move your mouse wheel up and down, that makes them move easier. This just speeds up workflow. G, and you're just using the G key, pressing the G key in between to move them down and there we go and we've got the one shape of the eye there the shape of the eye there and then all you've got to do is select all faces and then F to fill uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of edit mode and I'm going to go to shift and D just to duplicate that G X move it to the other side rotate it until it's about the same size as that because these eyes are very similar you can match, it, match the image by going back into edit mode and just moving it so it matches a bit better It's entirely up to you, you know, just to make it slightly different. And then what I'm going to do is come back out of edit mode, select these two, shift and D to duplicate them, scale them down, S and Z to, sorry, control Z, S scale in the Y direction just to make them. Oops. Good. Scale in the y direction just to make them slightly bigger. And then I'm going to move these over the, to the, the top of the nostrils in the image. In fact, I don't like that one, so I'm going to get rid of that one. X to delete. And I'm just going to copy that one again. So Shift and D. Rotate in the z direction, which is straight up and down. And G to move it over the other one. That's my two nostrils. The next thing I'm going to add is the mouth. So press the 7 key to get from the top. This time I'm going to add a plane. Um, G and Z. I don't actually need the face at the minute, so I'm just going to get rid of that by selecting the face. 
press X select and then only face and all that's done is left if I go into the point select I've got the edges of the square so what I'm going to do is match these up to the first two so scale and G the bits that we're doing is the bits that are going to get cut out so of the pumpkin itself so scale there and then I'm going to scale this down scale to a fat scale in the X scale by X and G to move them up and just scale it down until we get a set first tooth now there's several ways you can do this you can actually um, extrude it into the actual other teeth so you could um, for instance A select all scale by the Y say that's his first tooth I could rotate this round and one point select tech proportional editing off and just G move it there and sort of move these down to the actual other tooth coming out of the bottom and G move it there that's one way of doing the way I prefer is select that edge control R and we split this up into quite a few bits like that and control R split this it doesn't matter how many we're doing it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend them over to that side and I'm going to extend these over to this side so go on point select as you can see got all the points there and just move them to where they need to be so I'm going to go into proportional editing again oh I'm sorry proportional editing and I'm going to shrink the actual G shrink that down and just move things roughly into place just doing exactly what we did earlier on up, up at the top but what I'm doing is actually just making this pattern so that one will go down there that one will go there that one will go into that gap there if I move that one up there then I'm going to move that to there as you can see what I'm doing is just grabbing the next point and taking it so it follows that grey line and sometimes I'm doing it wrong but you'll get the idea in fact I'm really messing this up at the minute but you get the idea and we're just going to actually keep moving these out and about there we go right, so I'm just getting the shapes now this bit takes some time so I might actually put a bit of time lapse on here so but all I'm basically doing is hitting the G key moving them to the edge going for the next one moving it to the edge going for the next one and just keep going around that until I've got this shape all the way around
back into tools and options auto merge again gg to merge them together gg merge them together gg merge them together and there you have it we've now completed it what we've got there is a face um, with all the points go into edit mode look from the top A to select all and F will fill in the faces. Now what we need to do is we need to join these all together. So join them all together. Oops, sorry. Select that one. Hold shift down and join them all together. And for some reason it's not wanting to let me multi-select things which is strange. Alright, so what I'm going to do is X to delete the image because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to go on box select and select them all that way. I don't know why that, I think it's just a glitch in Blender. Right click and what I'm going to do now is just join them together. So hold them to caps lock on or something. No. I've oh, got it for trusters. It's not letting me actually select multiple select things, which I don't understand. Numbers locks not on. One seven. Oh, very strange. Box select to select all. And then right click and join them all together. Well, for some reason it stopped working for a minute but now it's working again. And then we're going to rotate this in the X direction by 90. Oops, there is it. Put the numbers lock back on. Rotate in the X direction by 90. And then what I'm going to do is object set origin to the center of the mass and I'm going to go into edit mode double A selects all or single A selects all the actual vertices and then I'm going to extrude Y in the Y direction that is down the green line the red line is the X direction and the Z comes up as a purple line from top to bottom but only when you're actually moving in that direction come back out of edit mode and now we have his face so and we'll rename that to rather than it being called circle we'll press the F2 key and call it face so all we need now to do is actually unhide our pumpkins so I'm just going to move this out the way. So G and Y down there. What we've got here is we've got a little eye by the pumpkin there. Alt H unhides everything. So we can also Alt and H. As you can see, all the little eyes went on and off. But you can actually individually select them as well to make them hide and reappear. So what I'm going to do is select the stem, select the pumpkin and I'm going to scale it up to something reasonable in size just to show you how this working right then. so I'm looking from the top now and what we've got there is that we've got the face and we've got the pumpkin right the pumpkin if we actually just move the stem away here it's got no volume to it so what we need to do is make a thickness. So I'm going to control Z just to put that stem back there. So I've gone to the pumpkin, select the pumpkin, <coughs> then select the spanner, add a modifier, 
and what we're going to do is solidify this bottle and we're going to solidify it by 0 0.04 meters and we're going to apply that all that does is if I move this now you will see there's a little bit of thickness to it now Control Z. that enables this model uh, this face to cut a hole through the skin earlier it didn't have a skin we just thought it was a solid model now it's got an actual inside shell and if we actually went move the camera right into it we're actually inside it now but the easiest way to do it is we select the face want to look from the front move the face into a good place or G and Z as I can see the purple lines now appeared and we go from the front and then we're going to move that G and Y and move it back into your model and then I'm going to add a modifier and the modifier I'm going to add is called the boolean modifier what we're going to do is we want to actually delete the face from the actual Oh no, I've selected the wrong object then. All right. So what I'm gonna do I put the boolean on the wrong object, so hit the cross again to actually get rid of the boolean. Select the pumpkin first. Sorry. Select the pumpkin first, hit the spanner, add the boolean, and the difference is the difference between that and the one that you actually put in this little box. So if we actually select on there and put face now it doesn't seem to have done much at all apart from make a mess of his actual uh, model but that might be because we haven't got enough subdivisions on this actual pumpkin let's have a look at the pumpkin so as you can see the subdivisions are quite large on this so what we'll do is we're just going to subdivide the pumpkin one more time before we even apply this modifier so put it on the monkey and add subdivide surface and we're just going to do it by to apply that and this should get us a better finish all right so select the monk uh, well select the pumpkin add a boolean then we select the face and that takes the face away from the boolean as you can see it looks like it's a lot better there's less mess around here so it look more like a cut pumpkin and then what we're going to do is we'll select the face and if you hide the face miraculously the face we've just made has been cut out of our pumpkin I've still got an hole on the bottom there, but I'll, I'll get rid of that in a minute. So all we've got to do is then delete the face because we've applied our modifier. All we've got to do is apply the modifier. I've applied the modifier. So that means that now that face has been cut out of, of the pumpkin. So we no longer need the face. So Alt H makes the face reappear and H uh, sorry X and delete the face because we no longer need it and as you can see I think that's uh, not a bad pumpkin all we need to do is add a bit of textures just to add a bit of, thing, uh, bit of the actual roughness about it but the good thing about pumpkins is that they are always rough and I've done them so they look really smooth face I've done them quite a few different ways but let's have a look all I'm going to do is quickly colour it in so add a colour to it so I'm just going to add two new shaders one's going to be the actual the the wooden bark of the stem so I'll take that into the dark colour range and I'm going to call that colour stem S-T-E-M and 
what I'm going to do is select that and put the stem color on there. If I go into that mode, everything's colored stem color. And then copy that. And the other one I am going to call it, sorry. And the second color I'm going to call pumpkin. P U M P K I N. Because that's going to be my orange color, so I'll right, take the lightness back up again and select the shade of orange you want. And that's orange I quite like. And then all we've got to do is add a light, change the background color to black. So well, let's change it to black now. So we're going to change the black brown color to black. So I'll make it into the night. As you can see, the actual sun's in the wrong place. But what we'll do is we'll leave that as it is. And I'm just going to add a light object. The light object is just going to be, I'm just going to put into the center of the pumpkin. So let's uh, add a light object. And what I'm going to do is add a point light. And because it's in the center of the pumpkin, increase the strength of that light. Let me render that. Fat. Let's just move his camera so that the actual camera can see the pumpkin from a distance. So, G, move it back. Make the camera point at the actual pumpkin by hitting this key here, which is a constraint. Add an object constraint and track to, and I'm going to track it to the pumpkin itself. And then we select this always at Z and this always at Y. And that makes it point at the pumpkin. So if we look through the camera now, that fills the camera a bit. So I'm just going to move it back a little bit more. G, G and Z, just to move it up. And G and Y, oops, sorry, G and X even. Just move it off to one side. And if we look through the pumpkin, through the camera at the pumpkin, press F12. There we have it, a Halloween pumpkin. Thank you for joining me on this tutorial. Please subscribe and join me on the next tutorial. Nice and simple that one, just a pumpkin.